Good morning, everyone. I thought uh, I would just go live for a few moments and share a chat that I had in the butchers. Um, yeah, I woke up at the middle of the morning, uh, early morning, drove over to my favourite butchers here in Woodall Spa, and uh, while waiting for the butcher to load up with all the things I was doing, I was having a nice chat with one of the locals, having a bloke's moan at stuff. And uh, I thought I would share some of the content with that of that with you because it seems seems relevant. So anyway, um, here's the view of Woodall Spa where we are. It's a gorgeous place, but fuel prices, fuel prices, morning, Alan. Fuel prices are town, aren't they? And uh, I heard this chap, he was saying he runs a holiday business here on the boats just down at the river. Sally Barbar, good morning. Uh, and he was saying that people aren't coming. The holiday makers aren't here this year. And the butchers noticed the same, that the holiday makers aren't here as well. And Susan and I were just talking about it just the other day. We went for a walk alongside the broads and there weren't as many boats. It was very, very noticeable. Morning, Andy. Uh, oh, good gracious, that UPS pulled in a bit close to my car. Uh, yeah, so all, all these people that aren't going on holiday in the UK and the bloke on the boats was saying it's because of fuel, it's fuel prices. Uh, it's not just the cost of the holidays cheaper abroad um, than it is in the UK, which it is. Um, we, we were looking at going on a broad boat just for a, uh, a little mini adventure of three or four days or a week. And to get a really, really plush one, a nice one, you're talking like 1,500, 1,700 quid out of season, plus a couple of hundred pound deposit for the fuel. Plus your food, you're talking two and a half grand. So two and a half grand for a week whereas you can go abroad for a couple of months for that, can't you? So it's no wonder that I was quite shocked. I was quite shocked that holiday makers um, have stopped in the UK so suddenly because after COVID and the lockdowns, there seemed to be a lot more people that were wanted to go on holiday and were reaching out. Fancy a bed, mate? Hiya. <laughs> Working since since clock in Leicester, yeah. Some of us are up early. Uh, we were out at the door at five this morning. So yeah, oh sorry, I've lost, lost my train of, train of thought. Um, it's, I don't think it's just the cost of the actual holiday and the cost abroad is cheaper. People really are worrying about fuel. The butcher himself was saying that his car's full of fuel at home and he hasn't been out because he doesn't, I couldn't miss the opportunity not to gloat, but to let them know that you know, I saw that coming, the issue about prices and fuel increasing and, being restricted on where you might drive and hence I went electric so I've just told them that you know I've driven over from Norfolk it's a couple hundred miles and it's not going to cost us more than a couple of quid and therefore we're free to do it and yeah they're all nodding their heads yeah electric cars the future it's it's just so sensible and yet you see some of the comments in my videos where people say oh you know you're rich bastard and excuse the French <laughs> um and, and they just think you're gloating about what you've bought and all these things that you've got. And it's not, it's not gloating at all. It's just sensible. I've worked hard, saved hard, and I've seen a future for living economically in my retirement. And to do that, I've invested in electric. It just makes sense. And it's almost upsetting now, isn't it, to watch people suffer with fuel prices and to really really worry about it to the extent that they're going to stay in and stay at home and, and not go and see family and not go out because of it so yeah it was, it was nice to have a moan in the butchers with uh, the people over there but it was really interesting to see that it's a couple of counties both Lincolnshire and Norfolk where the lack of tourism is very very noticeable and they all think it's fuel related it's not going to get any better either is it we're creeping up to two pound and get two pound a litre um, for fuel now so this isn't going to change electric cars are going to get more and more popular um, and there's a shortage of them so there'll be a lot of grumpy people that aren't happy thinking it's all a conspiracy <laughs> but yeah electric cars were cheaper weren't they in 2018 when i bought the kona electric and they're harder to get hold of now than they were then and i waited months and months for the kona electric it's a funny old time it really is Anyway, uh, I don't know whether this video is actually going to stay up because I've left the radio on. We've got Joshua Radin playing in the background and uh, I don't know whether this video comes up as monetized or not. Um, so I'd better turn the monetization off in case this uh, 
<laughs> Copyright infringement music isn't liked. Yeah, electric is the future. And Ionic 5. But did you see the last video? We're going Kia. We're going with uh, Soul. the Soul EV. And it's it's all Susan's fault. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's... Uh, it's so refreshing now that we've made a decision and we've got the car. It, it has been a funny old journey trying to find a second car. It's like we're just searching and testing cars for the sake of it. I feel settled now that we've made a decision. All right, so I'm just having a sip of my coffee. Anyway, just thought I would share that with you. Hi, Nige. Just about to make the jump into electric. You're oh, very wise, mate, very wise. Looking at the e Nero and Soul. It's a Nigel thing. <laughs> so I'll give you a very early heads up. I didn't plan on doing this, but why did we go for the eSoul? And it's just a very, very weird thing that we we went for not a test. Try and see an interior that would give us a clue as to what the new Megane would be like. And uh, when, when we were on the way, we happened to see the Kia dealership, and I said, oh, yeah, they might have a soul in this. Should we just go and have a look? <laughs> You're on camera, darling. <laughs> I'm trying to read the little comments. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, Susan's here. She said, don't put me on camera. Um, very, very, very ad hoc video, this one, as you can see. Handheld. I'm not worrying about it. But anyway, we went into the Kia dealership, and it all started that he was... He was a nice guy. He was dog friendly. He asked to send the dog come in. He can, can he meet him? Um, and then he said he's got one. He'll bring it round. And he sold. So he just brought it round. And then he said, here's the keys. You know, go and have a test drive. Just everything was the perfect sales pitch. So, you know, we were being suckered in because of how that worked. But when we went for the test drive in it, it just felt right. It, it was like home. Fact, it's it's very, will. very unusual. Within within five minutes, you think, this just feels really good and really comfortable. It welcomed us. And it is partly because it's exactly the same as the Kona Electric. Um, the drivetrain's the same. The flappy paddles is the same. The sat-nav was very similar. The first thing I noticed was um, the sat-nav was slow compared to the Mini. So the infotainment system is a bit slow. The Mini's is much more responsive. But it's because it drove well. It was easy to drive. Um, it was smooth. It covered the bumps well. It was spacious. It's perfect for cracker. It just ticked so many boxes. And then, of course, I know that the Soul, the Nero, and the owner has got the best drivetrain that there has been with electric cars so far. The new ones coming out aren't as good as the old ones. The old ones are the gems. So, you know, it's got fantastic range. We'll easily get 300 miles out of the Soul because all you need to do is get five miles per kilowatt hour. Well, with our driving, five miles per kilowatt hour is not going to be difficult, even in the Soul, which has um, a lower range than the Kona. So uh, just every box was ticked. So the moment Susan named the car, and she's calling it Hutch, um, I suddenly realised that she had an attachment already. And that's what we've been looking for. Been looking for a car that either I or Susan can love and enjoy and get into. So it doesn't matter which one we get into. It's whichever one's in the front, whichever one's charged, whichever one's the right practical size. We want to have two cars that isn't a his and hers car, but we can just use either. And we like driving either. Is We don't want the situation where, oh, I don't want to take that one. No, can, you know, can we swap or, or this sort of thing? And that was the big thing that ended up changing our mind between a, an I-Pace and a Polestar. Um, because Susan ended up saying to me, but you're going to have those as really precious. You're going to polish them like mad, like you you do with the mini so i'm gonna be frightened to take it out frightened to drive and that resonated with me that she wasn't comfortable in a bigger expensive car what she needed was um a more dog friendly car um more van like <laughs> um, one with space one you can get a cage in for the dog and she hasn't got to worry about whether she i don't know scratches it against a tree did i really just say that Trashes it. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean just you can be more comfortable with and just use and not have it as a precious item and that, that was it. So she has an attachment with the soul. She likes the look of it. I like the look of it. It's practical. And and here's the big thing as well that swayed it. I was thinking about the Renault and Megane, but Renault always discount their cars. So to pay list price for a new Megane that comes out, only to find in a year or so later they drop the price massively and discount them massively like they used to with the Zoe. 
and also no for them again, because, of course, the French government, which is Renault, um, are in league with Putin and they have a factory, car building factory in Russia. And they've made no announcement about reducing that or changing it. So um, they're actively keeping quiet, trying to get on with their business in Russia. And I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of anyone that doesn't say no, no I'm walking away from that uh, that conflict and that area. So Renault, in my mind, don't deserve my business for that for that alone. But yeah, Kia e Soul, um, it's just the perfect car. And price wise, hi Kevin, price wise, we're paying thirty three and a half. Um, it's about a thousand more than I paid for the Kona. And I honestly think that's a good price. I honestly think price is going to go up when the new Soul comes out and the new E-Nero's out. Prices are going to creep up again. They're going to keep creeping up. So I think now is a really good time to buy one of the old models, the older Konas, the older Nero, the older Soul, because it's the best drivetrain. I don't know about being a classic, but if they stop making the Soul, the Soul on the road is going to be really, really rare. We think it's got classic looks. So some people, it's a bit of a Marmite car. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I think it's so ugly, it's kitsch. Uh, I think that's what Susan said as well. Or, um, so kitsch, it's cute. Yeah, so kitsch, it's cute. Um, it, it is interesting when you look at the lines and you see, is it like Range Rover-like? You know, Does it look like a Skoda Yeti? And I, I just like it. So anyway, there's the reasons. That's why we're going with the E-Soul. Um, we, we've chosen it for... A huge number of reasons but it's such a logical good choice it just makes sense whereas it's very easy to look at the latest greatest electric car that comes out whether an ev6 or the ionic 5 or you know the latest pole star that comes out or the new smart hash one or i don't know every time a new car comes out you always think oh should i have that you know has that new megan got um, vehicle to grid capability and you're always looking for the next bit of tech and i, I think it's easy to get carried away so I've got on old school. I've gone with the old model. We're very, very happy. And uh, you paid full list for the Nero. Yeah, I paid full list for the Kona as well. But very, very happy to pay list price when prices are going up because it then feels like you've got a bargain. Um, so anyway, there you go. Um, Key at ESOL is what we've done. But that's not what I was actually going to talk about. I wasn't going to tell you about that. I was going to do a separate video. But uh, done anyway. Lead time. I was told the lead time. Whoops, sorry. I was told the lead time is between July and September on the Soul. So I think it's a case of they're going to do one more production run of the car because it's only in one color, um, white. You can have white, white, or white. Um, so I guess they're going to do one production run at the factory for the Soul and get the old model out before they bring out the new model. So it'll be a case of how many orders go through and when they've got enough for the production run, they'll uh, they'll produce them. So sometime between July and September. Wow, second hand with 9,000 miles on as well, and you paid that price. There are some ridiculous prices being quoted out there. It is cheaper now to buy them at a dealer, isn't it, and buy them brand new if you can wait. So it really does make sense to put your deposit down and uh, an order. Sorry about the reconnections. There's a few reconnections going on. Crack is getting hot. Hope this video does go live without um, being blocked for copyright. I'll have a look at that in a moment. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, hope you don't mind this impromptu video. Bye for now, as always. <laughs> See ya. <Bye. laughs>